Good morning. Good morning, everyone. I'll be reading from Psalm 84, verse 1 to 4. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty. My soul yearns, even faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may have a young. A place near your altar, Lord Almighty, my King and my God. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. Hallelujah. We have come before our maker, the almighty, the all-sufficient God, the creator, the possessor of the heavens and the earth, the one that is seated in the heavens and makes the earth his footstool. My praise and worship be as a sweet-smelling servant to him this morning. And may every single one of us have a life-changing encounter with him. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. Please, all of you can help us Amen. project Psalm 100. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, we are all going to, by the way, happy Amen. new one. Amen. Happy Independence Day. <laughs> so, we're all going to uh, read Psalm 100 together. Don't worry. It's just respond to five. Can we go? Okay. Press Make, one. Let's go. Make, Make a, a joyful, joyful shout to the Lord, all you land. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Now that the Lord is God, it is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Next breath. Enter into his gate. Thanksgiving Hallelujah. and into his court with praise. Mm -hmm. Be thankful to him and bless, and bless his, name. his name. Verse 5. For the, the Lord, Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and, and his truth endures to all generations. Hallelujah. So this morning, we are going to be praising God with the understanding of Psalm 100. Are we good? Do I have a witness in the house? Hallelujah. Yeah. Just Praise imagine yourself. Say him that you are dancing to God Almighty. Hallelujah. Praise God. We give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. We give you glory, Lord, as we honor you, for you.
go ahead and worship the Lord this morning. I want you to just honor the Lord, exalt His holy name. The Lord is in this place. The presence of God is in this place. Whether you are viewing online or you are on site, the presence of God is in this place. So I want you to reverence Him. I want you to exalt His name. I want you to worship the Lord. I want you to exalt His holy name. Go ahead and bless the Lord. Extol Him. 
declare he's worthy of worship declare his power declare his glory declare his kingdom declare his majesty oh yes worship the lord this morning in the beauty of holiness give god all the glory that is due to his name the father is seeking for true worshipers who will worship him in spirit and in truth <laughs> hey worship the lord in the beauty of holiness come before his holy presence hey ascend and worship before the holy hill of the lord <laughs> ascend and worship before the holy hill of the lord hey let god perceive a sweet fragrance of worship from his people this morning oh he reigns in majesty there is none like him just go ahead and worship the lord your power and
Dalia Baba Rande, Umarande Baranda E Karambarabash, Be Marande Baba Sangaya, E Maranda Yalabo Zengaye. Worship the Lord, saints of God, exalt His holy name. He's the ancient of days, He has no beginning of days, He has no ending of days. Is the Alpha and Omega, ha. Almighty God, Almighty God, ha. awesome God? Go ahead and just worship the Lord this morning. Exalt His holy name. Yes, in the beauty of holiness, let's exalt Him. Yes, His presence is in this place. His presence fills this place. Lambar and the Elabobo Sangaya. Ha! E Kalile Bobandia. E Lada Brandaya, Kara Brandaya. E Maranda, E Barandaya, Baradaya. E Karam Rande. Zamarinda, E Marandi, Lada Brababa Baradada. E Barandi, E Kara Brandaya, Baba. Be baran to you, Baba 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 Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I don't know how to express this. Uh, we will just pray about it. Around 3 a.m., I was before the Lord and somehow my eyes opened. I saw myself somewhere and I made a statement to someone talking to someone. And in that revelation, I didn't understand what I said. It was not the tongue of India. It wasn't in Nigeria. At least I'm familiar with some of our languages in Nigeria. And as I just waking up, I just got my phone and just Googled what I just said. And you know what he said? He said, Um forty, um forty now. Um forty now. What's the meaning of um forty now? It's not a quiet bomb. As I Googled it, I discovered it's a Danish language. I know the meaning. More to ask for more to ask for that was what the lord was just speaking to me if i was if i was shocked that this could be the meaning a danish translation you know the google translate that's what i used and i saw more to ask so i don't know the dimension god wants you to press into him this morning but the word i received means um now in dan Danish language, it was that Swedish people, people from Sweden or so, I think they are the Dan, they are the one who use that language Danish. But I just saw it. More to ask, man. So I just want to lift up your voice. I don't know what dimension. Place a demand upon God. Because me, I'm seeing it that we have been asking, but God is saying, you have not even asked enough. There's still more capacity to ask for more. I just want to press maybe more of God. Ha. More of God, more of His revelation. I don't know, but I saw and I saw myself speaking that language. Say um fortina, and I saw the meaning. More to ask, more. There are still more to ask. I want to press into God this morning and begin to ask. Latch on this word and pray. Whether more of God, I don't know. I don't know what you desire, ha. but God is challenging you and I this morning. I perceive strongly that we have limited Him. We have limited him. The Bible speaks concerning the children of Israel. He said, They limited the Holy One of Israel. Ha! More to ask. Um, now. More to ask. Oh, yes, pressing this money. Hey, God, more of the revelation of Jesus. More of the revelation of Jesus. More capacity. Ha! Shakaya. I don't know what you desire of the Lord. Pray this money. He's saying there's more for you to ask. More. Um, fortina, more to ask. Le branda shakaya, le karabra, more capacity in the spirit more understanding of divine things more revelation of jesus whether you are online or outside i want you to latch on that word 
comfort now. There's more to ask. More to ask. Praise unto the Lord. <laughs> what have you asked the Lord for? What has God done for you? And you think that's the limit? God is limitless. <laughs> He's saying more to ask. Press him. Capacity. Oh, yeah, to receive more. <laughs> Capacity for more. Say more to ask. Yes, Lord. More of your glory. More of your revelation. More of your death and insight. More of your blessings. <laughs> more of your prosperity. We ask for this morning. More of your presence. Your holy presence. More of your favor. There's more, more, more to ask. More to ask. Is the Shaddai, the Almighty God. The Shaddai, the Almighty God. The many-breasted God. More. We place a demand upon you more. We receive more. More from you, O oh God. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, we pray. Father, we exalt your name this morning. Fill this room with your awesome presence. As we have ascended unto your holy hill this morning, we ask that you come down in your glory. Reveal your glory. Reveal your power in this meeting. May your spirit overwhelm us in this place. Let lives be transformed in this place. Let sinners encounter Jesus in Zion this morning. Let no one step in here and go the same. Let the sick be healed this morning. Let the confused receive direction this morning. We place a demand upon your ability to do more for us. Do more for us. More unprecedented favor. Unprecedented healing. Unprecedented miracles. Unprecedented revelation of whom you are. In the name of Jesus. Thank you precious father. We give you all the glory. Honor and majesty. For in Jesus matchless name. We have worshipped. Somebody give a shout of praise in the house. A shout of praise in the house. Glory be to God. You are not excited. You are in the presence of the Lord. In the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. In the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. Joy is never lacking in the presence of God. At his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. If you are excited in the house, give some praise. Make a sound. I mean, give a joyful, I mean, joyful sound of praise this morning. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. You are welcome to the presence of the Lord, whether you are viewing online or on site. You are welcome to the very presence of the Lord. I want to assure you, you can't come into the presence of the Lord consciously and go back the same. You will not come and go the same in the name of Jesus. You will be a better person. A, a transformed life you will become. A blessed life you will become. You will be a carrier of the presence of God in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Pastor, I've been teaching us about love. How many of us love with the teachings in this season? How many of us can say, I love Nigeria? How many of us? I love Nigeria so much. I don't have any other country. I've not bought citizenship of any other country. I don't know about you. This is my own country. I'm proud to be a Nigerian. Sometimes in the past, when you travel the nations, you see people want to find out, how you're from Nigeria. They want, to, they want to welcome you. People are excited meeting you that you are from Nigeria. Then, if our professor Chiki will be of blessed memory, he wrote an article. I used to have a copy of that article in 1983. We we're talking about the glories of those days, warning our government then on what to do. I mean, how to undo this nation and sustain where we have attained onto. He said, it's one more salary in Nigeria. He will travel to the UK and live in luxury, living in five star hotel for four months. One month salary. I used to have a diary in our house then in southwest if you check the diary you see a pound was 75 copper a pound 75 copper so if you're earning good salary if you go to the uk they will celebrate you those times are coming again those times are coming again before our very eyes you will see it as long as we keep believing in the almighty god i want to pray today i want to thank god first of all this our or this october one independence day celebration 63 years a 63 year old person in a normal situation should be a grandfather, right? Ah. One of our doctors in those days called me. He said, Ah, Pastor Richard, I don't want to tell you I'm a G 
grand grand power of two gpo2 uh -huh. he said i'm gpo2 i didn't understand he said i said what's that sir he said i'm not a grandfather a grandpa of two that came to see his grandchildren in Paraco. i said oh good so i want to thank god <laughs> For Nigeria, we still have a reason. You are here. You are not running at task in the forest and all that. Check. Civil war. You are. Ah. You, are, you can still come out from your house, come to church, worship God. Ah, we have a reason to thank God. I just want to bless God for this great nation. Let's thank God for Nigeria. We thank you, Father, for this beloved nation. It's a nation God has interest in. This nation, God has interest in this nation. Ah. What has brought us together, bound us together over the years? Is it can only be divine, can only be divine. I want to thank God for this nation for the for the amalgamation from 1914, yes, from the independence from 1960, 63 years of our independence. I want to thank God, yes, when I when I when I be on the very, very rough path, raw path, yes, when I've saved through storms, yes, we've been going through storm, yes, in the security architecture, in the economy, in the critical uh, infrastructure, I mean infrastructures, we might be having issues, but we are still grateful to God. Give God praise for Nigeria. Thank God for his mercy over this nation. Thank God for his love for us. His unfailing love towards Nigeria. Thank God for his loving kindness. Thank God for the vast human and mineral resources God has blessed us with. Nigeria is one of the most blessed nations on earth. One of the most blessed nations on earth. In any way you want to look at it. One of the most blessed nations on earth. I want to thank God for making all that. Yes, you see, many nations have suffered diverse uh, natural disasters, claiming lives. We have just had a little share of that. We are not a nation given to earthquakes that you just see one tsunami will just clear cities. God has just been blessing us. See, all our, our land, you can plant crops, they will yield. Rain falling in due season, dry season induced. Beloved, I want to thank the Lord. Discoveries are made on a daily basis <laughs> of deposits of minerals the nations are looking for. <laughs> on a daily basis. On a daily basis. I heard about the large deposit of uranium between Kanu and, and Josh <laughs> recently. Large deposit of uranium. What nations of you are looking for? We have lithium or just in Northwest. We have my oh my the future of energy is in this little and we have it in abundance we can't you gently just bless the lord give him praise hallelujah god is so faithful in the name of the lord jesus the bible says in proverbs 19 21 it said there are many devices in the heart of a man but nevertheless the counsel of the lord that shall stand some translation says that the, 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 the plans of god the the the, the the, the, the purposes of God shall prevail. I love that. The purpose of God shall prevail. I want to pray. See, God, God brought Nigeria together for a purpose. There is a prophetic destiny over this nation that the devil is fighting. So I want to lift up our voice and begin to prophesy over Nigeria. Yes, Nigeria will become great. The purpose of God for this nation, for betting this nation will be accomplished. Nothing will stop it. He said there might be plans, there might be uh, brainstorming. Nevertheless, the purpose of God shall prevail. Pray for Nigeria. The purpose of God, prophetic destiny, the prophetic plan, the prophetic destiny of God will prevail over this nation. Nothing will stop it. Prophesy over Nigeria. Prophesy over Nigeria. Oh yes, Rabranda Shakaya prophesy over the prophetic destiny over the future of this nation. Nigeria will become great again. Oh yes, I read Isaiah 62, verse 4. He said, Thou shalt no more. I proclaim upon this Nigeria, thou shalt no more be time forsaken, neither shall the land any more be time desolate. But thou shalt be called Hefzibah and the land Behula, for the Lord delighted 
in thee, Nigeria, and thy land shall be married. We prophesy over Nigeria. Yes, Nigeria will not become forsaken. Nigeria will take a place in the committee of nations. Nigeria will rise again. Nigeria will not die. Nigeria will become a prosperous nation. Hey, where unity and progress thrive. Yes, where there's prosperity for all from the north to the south, from the east to the west. Nigeria will emerge a glorious nation, an enviable nation, the envy of nations. I prophesy in the name of Jesus, equity will reign over Nigeria. Fairness will reign. Justice will reign. Righteousness will reign. Peace will reign over Nigeria. Nigeria, you will not be time forsaken. Neither shall your land be any more time desolate. But thou shalt be called Efziba and thy land Behula. For the Lord delights in you, Nigeria, and your land shall be married. Give God a praise for Nigeria this morning. Exalt his holy name. Bless the Lord. If you know God has answered your prayers, yes, yeah, God has given authority and back into your declaration. Give God a praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We give you all the praise for your plans for Nigeria. The devil can stop your plans, your purpose for this nation. We know that. We hand over this nation into your hands. Do with us what you desire from the foundation of the earth. Let Jesus be glorified over this nation. May your kingdom come over Nigeria and may your will be done in this nation. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Celebrate the Lord Jesus. I'll take your sin in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. For this week's Bible study review, we have in our midst a dear brother whom God has prepared to be a blessing. So let's put our hands together as we make welcome, brother God's power, a Jobe, for the Bible review. Good morning, church. Praise the Lord. Happy, happy, happy new month. Happy independence. Hallelujah. Uh, our Bible study review for this cover the Jeremiah chapter 34. Jeremiah 34 to 52. Then Lamentation chapter 1 to 2. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. But for the purpose of this review, I will focus on chapter 41 to uh, uh, chapter 44. Praise the Lord. So, during this time, it's, when I look at it, it's almost like what we are having in our nation, Nigeria now. Things were not too good for them. Things were not too rosy. They, by this time now, Babylon has come to take over Judah and they were, they were like prisoners now. So in, in chapter 41, the king of Babylon had placed a governor over Judah to be controlling Judah. So the man was assassinated by Ishmael. So he came, he killed the man, he brought about 10 of his men, he killed, he killed the man. The person that uh, the uh, king of Babylon has put in charge of Judah, he killed him. After killing him, then another man, uh, Jonah, came to kind of tried to savage the, the situation. So he tried to come and attack uh, Ishmael. But Ishmael escaped with about eight of his men. So when he escaped, then in chapter 42, the people now say, ah, the person that uh, was in charge has been killed. Though. If uh, Nebuchadnezzar finds out, there will be a problem. So they now say, ah, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? So they decided that they wanted to go to Egypt. But the thing is that, at least before they went, they asked, okay, let us find out whether we should go to Egypt or not. So they called their Jeremiah and find out, okay, they now asked Jeremiah, should we go to Egypt or not? Now, that's one of the points I want to make that. As Nigerians, now I don't need to tell you, all of us are feeling it, the issues we have in Nigeria, I don't, I don't have to overplug it. You know, anybody that has the opportunity to leave the country, we want to leave. Any person that, can, that have the privilege, opportunity to want to leave, want to go to a better place, who doesn't want it? But the question I want to ask you this morning is that, is that the plan of God? Is, is, it, is it what God is telling you to do? Not because, okay, you feel that, okay, I have the opportunity, 
what I'm going to do there is already settled. So I, I can't come and kill myself here. I pass suffering. I, I need to go. Fine. You're looking at it physically, it's good. But I want to ask this morning is that what God is telling you to do? Is that the purpose of God? Because when they went to go and ask Jeremiah, thank God they even decided to go and ask Jeremiah. That's the thing. So in your life, whatever you are doing, try to ask God. Try to do it. Ask for the purpose of God. So I was even happy that at least they asked Jeremiah. Okay, should we go? Should we not go? Because if Babylon now know now, there's a problem for us. So we have to leave. They asked, they, they meant Jeremiah. Jeremiah, okay, no problem. Let me go ask. He went to ask God, and God told them that no, don't go, stay. Don't go, stay. Even the issue we're having in Nigeria, God said, don't go, stay. He will do it well for you. Don't go. But I was even I was scared in it because Jeremiah told them what will happen to them if they go to Egypt. He stated everything that okay, uh, there's hungry in Nigeria. I want to go over there. He said that if you go there, hungry will come and finish you there. You say that uh, there's war in Nigeria. Okay, let me go there. There's peace. He said that if you go there, but we come to Egypt there and finish all of you there. So he gave them the reason why they should not go. And he also told them that if you stay, I will bless you. I will not pull you out. I will establish you here. So what am I telling you? Even in this country, even I've thought that no matter how Israel do anyhow, no matter how God punish them, he doesn't destroy them totally. He still brings them up. The other nation will say, okay, wipe them off, finish them. But his children, anyhow, he stop at them. He, he will still bring them up. He doesn't finish them all together. So he was telling them, stay, stay. Don't go, stay. But unfortunately, they went because of pride. The man, the, 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 the leader said, you are lying, you are telling us lies. You are, you are lying to us. That man has told us, so, the other man has told you to tell us lies. We will go. Just imagine, if, oh, if it was me, the reason he gave you is scary enough not to go. But yet, they still went. They went, but when they got there, they disobeyed God, they went there because of pride. And they went there. For, they even carried uh, Jeremiah, everybody. They went. The Bible says that when they got there, God now told Jeremiah, tell them, maybe they've come there now, see what will happen to you. Now, I want, uh, let me just read this. Verse, chapter 40, 43, verse 11. Let me read this, then we'll close. Chapter 43, verse 11. I, I, it reads, He will come here and attack Egypt. That's in Nebuchadnezzar. He will come here and attack Egypt. He will bring death to those who are supposed to die. He will make prisoners of those who are to be taken captive. And he will bring war to those who are to be killed with a sword. Now, do you see something there? He said, He will come, he will come here. And attack Egypt, he will bring death to those who are supposed to die. Does it mean that, means that some people are supposed to die? Some people are supposed to be taken captive. It's as if that's been said to. He will bring war to those who are supposed to be killed. So now the question I want to ask this morning is that you don't have to be among them. You don't have to be among them. Uh, the country, they say, uh -huh, 95% of Nigeria are living uh, above the poverty level, are living below a dollar a day. Fine. You don't have to be among those 95. You don't have to. It's a choice. Things are hard. Yes, there's no job. Uh, people, uh, uh, 19, uh, half of Nigerians are, are, are suffering poverty. Fine. You don't have to be among those ones. You can decide. You don't, want to, you don't have to be among those people. During the uh, coronavirus time, that was when I discovered that, no, no, no. I refuse to be among statistics for negative. I refuse. I don't want to be among that statistics. During that period, the government, I now discovered that the government does, doesn't know me. Those guys don't know me. They don't know that I exist. I did not feel their impact whatsoever. So they don't know whether I exist. They don't know me. I said, okay, fine. That means they don't know me. I don't know them. Everybody's on his own. So I decided that all their negative statistics, uh, so, so, so people are hungry, I will not be among them. So you can decide not to be among them. You can decide if things are getting bad. Fine, it's getting bad, but you will you, you, you not be among it. You can choose not to be among it because there's a group. If 95 are hungry, the other five, they're not hungry, so you can be among those five. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> that was powerful.
Put your hands together for bro God's power and you be. You don't have to be amongst the majority. The calamities are hitting. You can be among the five, the company of the those exempt, exempt from harm. Hallelujah. May God exempt us in this season. May we escape the wrath upon the nations in this season. The fire may come around you, but may you not be touched. Can go through the fire, can go through the waters of life. May the effect of the fire and the waters refine you and not destroy you. And may the blessings of God find expression in your life. In farming, the Bible says you shall be satisfied. That will be your portion in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Put your hands together once again for our brother. We have a testifier in the house. Just three minutes, uh, few, I mean, just few minutes. We're hearing one of our sisters. Sister Loretta Dottin Lori. They have testimonies in the land. Testimonies. You will have a story. Hallelujah. I, I just know that the glory of God is raising my heart. How can I speak? I hold back the glory of God. I stand here this morning. Last Sunday I was so overwhelmed say anything today i've come back to say thank you jesus for this precious gift that you gave to me i just want to give god praise for my life i remember from the first capacity prayer when i i was sitting down by that uh, and i asked god to come i said god i'm ready for another baby but there's something i don't want i don't want the gift that will take me away from you remember the the statement his presence and his presence and that was all i asked god for i said god keep me in your presence and i am here to say that his presence was my strength the strength the grace everything i can't come here i know some persons are saying ah, loretta you are strong you are this but that is not true i'm not strong i don't have the power i don't even have the capacity to do anything on my own all that happened to me throughout the journey of this pregnancy to delivery the testimonies that you all heard in case you need the details, you can meet me later because of time. But I just want to say that it was God. It was the presence I received from the presence of God. I don't know who my testimony is going to encourage today in the house. That is why I came back here to tell you that whatever you need is in the presence of God. And the Lord said to me, as I have spoken to my ears, so will I do unto you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And this is the evidence of my testimony. Praise God. Secondly, I want to appreciate God for my mother-in-law. She seated here today. I remember, I know because of time, I won't be able to give us the details. So, but I know that before I got married, after I met her, I just knew that where I'm supposed to be. Praise the Lord. And this woman has loved me. I don't know how to describe it. Sometimes I said, I think this woman does not love me more than my own mother. She calls me like every other day just to check up on me. And I kept saying, ah, God, how did I do to deserve this guy? Because I've heard stories of, ah, you know mother-in-law, ah, you have a mother-in-law that is still alive. I said, thank God for mine. That was what I asked God for. And by God's grace, she's here today. She's strong. I know because of COVID, she couldn't attend her wedding. This is the first time ever since I got married for the past three years plus that she came to visit us. And I just want to give God glory. The way she takes care of me whenever I go to a Lauren to visit, I say, God, Give me an opportunity to take care of this woman too. And today she's here. I just want to return glory to God. She's here today. I know a lot of things happened. I think about some weeks before she was supposed to come in, we lost somebody in the family. A dear son of the family. I asked her husband, what kind of temptation is this? Are you sure she will still be able to be? Are you sure we're going to be able to do all of our plans to do? But I just gave God the prayer. What are we going to do? She came in. On Sunday, I asked her, Someone. Where did you get this joy from? He said to me, I want to be the devil to shame. The devil that said that we are not going to be joy. The devil that said that we are not going to be happy. That devil has been put to shame. Today, my mother in law is very strong. She's, she's healthy, even though the devil came and brought sickness upon her when she came in. I, just, we, I don't know where to start from, but God that did it for us. May His name be praised forever in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together and appreciate the Lord for that wonderful testimony. The presence of the Lord is in the presence of the Lord. So wherever we desire in the presence of the Lord, from the presence of the Lord, is found 
in the presence of the Lord. May you locate every of your desire in the presence of the Lord in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have a minister in the house who's going to sing to us, I mean, to minister to us in song. Put your hands together and welcome, make welcome, Brother Tekena Prince, for a special song. Praise the Lord. The title of this song is Mercy. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. I'm living proof of what the mercy of God can do. Cause if you knew me then, you believe me now, He turned my whole life upside down, took the old and He made it new. That's what the mercy of God can do. Now I'm alive to tell the story of how I've overcome. It's His goodness and mercy and the power of the blood. And I'm so glad that my freedom wasn't based by what I've done It's His goodness and mercy And the power of the blood Ooh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. Thought I to be six feet beneath the earth for all the things I've done the things I've said choices made that I regret thought I would still be lost of God Now I'm alive to tell the story of how I've overcome <laughs> It's His goodness and mercy and the power of the blood I'm so glad that my freedom wasn't based by what I've done it's His goodness and mercy And the power of the blood Oh, so much power in my Savior's blood Hey, yeah, yeah Was the cross meant for me That my Savior carried now I free by the mercy of God was the grave made for me that my sin lay buried now I been set free by the mercy of God was the cross meant for me that my Savior carried now made free by the mercy of you believe me raise up your hands and give him praise oh, it's not great meant for me that my sin lay buried now been redeemed by the mercy of God now I'm alive to tell the story of I've overcome it's your goodness and mercy and the power of your blood. And I'm so glad that my freedom 
Wasn't based by what I've done It's your goodness and mercy And the power of the blood Let's still go ahead and put our hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. His love is better than life. His love is better than life. Hallelujah. We've been hearing about the love of God towards mankind. And it's high time that we expressed our own love towards our Heavenly Father. So for 20 seconds, just go ahead and lift up your voice and thank Him for loving you the way He does. Just thank him. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. There's no greater love than that. Just go ahead and thank God for loving you the way he loves you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for laying down your life.
impossible without you, Lord. How can I live on God?
Hallelujah. Shall we put our hands together for the Lord? Please, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Help me welcome someone close to you and say, You are welcome to God's presence this morning. Please speak like you have the life of God in you and say, You are welcome into God's presence, the very presence of the Almighty. I would like to welcome you this morning. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'd like to. Uh, greet us happy independence day happy independence day do we have nigerians in the house this morning happy independence day praise the lord i just like to encourage us to start with this morning as Nigerians we're not Nigerians by chance and especially to us as Christians a Christian a Nigerian God has strategically put us here for a reason Some of us have the opportunities to travel to different places outside of Nigeria. Opportunity to live, opportunity to walk, opportunity to um, go on vacation. But I want to appeal to us and encourage us as Nigerians, as Christians who are Nigerians, we have... Um, godly responsibilities to our nation you're not a christian in nigeria by chance god designed it so let me read a passage of scripture first timothy and chapter four yes things may not look like it things may not look attractive impressive people finish from school not having what to do personally i feel the nigerian state will not take all of that responsibility someone can see in the generation of our parents before they left school they were sought for employment even when i was in school year four year five we have some of the companies coming to check us interview us give us orientation i remember some of those oil companies or servicing companies like slumber j they come and if you are really very distinguished you get some of my classmates got work um from their it time year four it and then service year and then also immediately after service year so but let me say that <laughs> so that um people can be for the challenge the nigerian state we we the nigerian state will not take the rest should not take the responsibility for all the unemployment cases in the times of our parents, my dad you need to consider the nigerian population and then compared to now the population has gone when i was in primary six Compared to now, I think the population has at least 
was it 48 million then or 96 million i'm trying to remember that was 1977 1978 the nigerian population was it 48 million or 96 million i can't remember very well now but even if it was 96 million now we're over 200 million that's more than double many institutions have collapsed many institutions have relocated what i'm trying to say in essence so that i don't spend too much time there is the society needs to evolve from yes the government takes part of the responsibility but the family unit may also have to take part of the responsibility the government taking part of the responsibility in that a government should have foresight a development plan a neighborhood uh, maybe 50 years ago had just 100 people the same neighborhood now has 10,000 people what development plan was made for power supply or water supply or road network that is part of a government to so have a vision and a plan that this will grow at this rate this will be the pressure that will come upon water supply come upon road networks a road network that serves maybe 100 vehicles probably down serving 5,000 vehicles there'll be pressure on that road to get damage in a very short time so on the part of government those things have to be planned out and developed and um, where there is maybe uh, one transformer in the same neighborhood you might need probably up to four transformers and all of that but where i feel also the society will also need to take responsibilities we also can think the people in government are human beings and every one of us came out of family you should be able to think like i tell my children my biological children the society will increasingly be unable to employ every employable person maybe when i finish school and across the nation maybe um 200,000 pe people finish school but i finished school about 30 years ago i finished university about 30 years ago. so now as against 200,000 people graduating in one year now you may have two million people graduating in one year and there's a limit to what all companies will take and also with developing technology artificial intelligence you find that companies will just engage <laughs> well, i was out of country uh, out of the country for a while so some of my friends took us my wife and i on um for dinner and so I was saying, see, ah, this car park, because it was like a multi-level car park. They said, look at this car park. Like Nigerians used to work here before. You see them as park attendants and all that. But now there are gadgets. There are machines. There are computerized gadgets that you drive in, you slot in whatever you are meant to slot in. The thing opens for you and you get in. And then when you are going, you slot in the, uh, your digitalized card. And so that has taken away work from many people. So we have to improvise. We have to improve. So what I'm saying in essence is, don't go to school with the mind of this oil company will employ me, this bank will employ me. Go to school with the mind of I can do something. Don't just go to school. Now I don't ask people, what did you study? I may ask that, but I will follow it up with what can you do? Because if you go to school with the mind of I work in oil company, I work in a bank and then they reach their quota they will have quotas in the number of people they can employ a bank no matter the number of graduates they are there for profit so they will not employ more than the quota for the season for the year so where a bank the entire banking sector in nigeria determines we're going to employ fifty thousand people this year and then five hundred thousand people are churned out by public universities private universities abroad universities there will be an overload of 450,000 but where someone goes to school studies whatever maybe you can make hair maybe you can make shoes maybe you are into photography you can do freelancing maybe you are into video editing post-production editing you can do freelancing and so while you are hoping and praying and planning that a company can employ you you have a portable gift you have a portable skill and then even while you are not employed you have a skill that you can put on the table 
you have a skill maybe we shoot so some of the foremost indigenous shoemakers in our nation when she university studied something else but they realized some of them i remember a lady i think she's in lagos she just realized that look i'm good with turning leather and turning fabrics into shoes why don't i develop that and she's smiling to the bank now what i'm saying in essence is let's not put all the blame on the government that the government is useless the government is hopeless and family we should be able to plan your benefactor your uncle you should be able to plan you should be able to think at this rate the people when i was in year one the people who are in year four year five till now many of them are not employed am i going to join that pool or am i going to do something else because whether we like it or not many of us young people were graduating from schools polytechnics and universities and then we find ourselves not employed not because the competence is not there but because there's a limit to what those organizations can take the smart countries They've learned to develop countries like um, Singapore, like um, Malaysia, and some of those Eastern Asian countries. They develop more of crafts. I mean, they develop a lot. Don't let me say more. A lot of crafts, craftsmanship, so that you are able to be a truck driver. You are able to be a, an artisan. You are able to be a plumber. And the, the good thing about it, if you are skilled sufficiently in those things, it is also an internationally portable ability you can go to african countries you can go to europe you can go to asia it will surprise you many of those artisans they make more money than some of these engineers and some of these uh, medical health workers and they also have a leverage in that some of their income is not even taxable it's not taxable it's a mobile gift they are paid cash and many of those things are not taxable so i want to appeal to us and i think we need to have fora like this where we do a mental re-engineering that everybody if shell can employ fifty thousand people and then two hundred and fifty thousand people are available and competent for the same job description that means uh, if they can employ did i say 20 or 50 50 and then you have 250 that's a that is an overflow of 200 what happens to the 200 and then we shouldn't have the mindset especially for young people that oh then i want to do yahoo yahoo then uh, they, if they will not do reparation i will force them to do reparation i will get the money out let's stop the blame game blaming people around us blaming parents blaming society blaming government what can you do for yourself how can you add value to yourself what can you bring to the table if you lack it go for it it will surprise you that you can become an employer of labor instead of waiting for who we employ you you're able to employ other people and you're able to add value to them i think we need to begin to have this cultural mindset change in our nation governments will do what they have to do but government will not do everything government is meant to create an enabling environment but government will not employ everybody i read a few days ago was it last week one of the federal parastators in our nation and with a new minister i think that's the minister of works he told them they came late they're not going to enter the office they went to lock him inside his office he said because he didn't tell them that he will be checking people who come late that is a major systemic decay you are employed you are told your time of employment is 7 30 to 3 30 probably and you feel you have a right to come to work at eight even if you don't have a job for that day create something it is a systemic decay that people employed and there are terms of description for their employment they now feel because they are used to wrongdoing that how dare this new minister come around to be telling them what to do does he think in a, he's in a barracks and they locked him inside his office that's a systemic decay don't be a part of that be a part of solution provider uh, prov solution providers don't be a part of decay you have no moral right to be an organization where you are, in, you are employed to report at 8 and you report and uh, report at 8 30 and you have an attitude about it and you are em employed you are paid for eight hours um, service delivery in a day and you have an attitude that even if they get three hours from you in a day they should be celebrating you no know? it's a systemic problem we have in nigeria we think politicians are the problem in our nation the civil servants are a bigger problem 
He said they want to um, check the system. There seems to be 20,000 uh, civil servants, for example, but it seems they are doing the work of just 3,000. Let's, let's filter the process. And they rise against the system. Frustrate the system. There was one in Quara State some weeks or months ago. They rose against the body that wanted to check them that who are the real workers. One, he said, How dare you? You met us here. Quara State Civil Service. I can go from system in parastatal to parastatal and um, sector to sector. We should be solution providers. If you're a Christian and you are in Nigeria, don't wish ill for the society. Don't speak evil of the society. Look for what you can do. Look for what value you can add to the society. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes, I think it's chapter 8, verse 11, it said, when judgment against an evil work is not speedily ex executed. If the media can help me, help me project that. I think it's Ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verse 11. He said, when judgment against an evil work is not speedily executed. Thank you. The heart of men is fully set in them to do evil. It is evil for your minister, your boss, to tell you report for, I mean, to tell you that you came late and there are consequences and you are threatening him or her. That they didn't notify you that they will be checking late comments. In this little seg um, section where I walk, this church office, I have my reporting time. If I look at it, I'm going to be five minutes late. I call the office admin. God in heaven created the earth. He wants to do things on earth and he checks with man. Will I hide that? Will I do from Abraham, my servant? So he, no, we should, every one of us at every level, we should make ourselves accountable. There will be really a day and it will be coming late to the office. I will not call and say, look, it is for this reason. I'm already in this place. I wanted to do this thing. And somebody will think I'm the number one person. But I have a God who is watching. Whether I'm a hypocrite. Because our words carry weight, not because of what we say, but because of the life we live. You live a contrary life, your word will be as vapor. It carries no weight. So I want to appeal to us Nigerians, you're a Christian in Nigeria, all those places you want to run to. It will amaze you that most of those countries, they're not even godly nations. They're not God-fearing. They're not God-seeking. But they value public space. They, they, they have what I call mutual respect. They value public space. I was driving almost every time when my daughter and my niece are with me in the, in the vehicle. I complain. Just this morning, one was just driving against traffic like that. With glee. Is that government? Is that senator? Is that governor? It is inside every one of us. What is making systemic failure, systemic decadence, it is within every one of us. Whoever is in office up there at state level or federal level came from amongst us. They can't be wrong down here and suddenly be right up there. We throw up what we have. And so if change will happen, it starts in your little space. How do you handle, handle public things? How do you handle public space? How do you handle public facilities? When you go to a public toilet, do you leave it, do you leave it as clean as you met it? All those little things matter. Some people will go to, to, to public toilets. We see it in the house of God. And carry the whole roll. And put it in their back pocket. No be our money, taxpayers. Do you pay tax? And my papa money. Who told you that? So let's just make a change. That's not even my message this morning. It's just for us. Our heart needs to be right towards our nation. You need to release a blessing. And God said, even when I allowed you to go to Babylon, you went down to Babylon. He said, pray for the peace of the land. In the peace of the land will be your peace. I think you find that in Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 29. In the peace of that land will be your peace. And that is even a land of captivity. And here we are, we are not in captivity. We are in our own land. Pray for the peace of this land. He said, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. So even before they were taken into captivity in the land where they were, he said, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. 
they shall prosper that love thee. To prosper is not to make money. To prosper is to do well. There are people who are making money who are not prospering. To prosper is to do well. Do well in health. Do well in mind. Do well in goodwill. Do well in favor. Do well strangers just delight in you. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. The citizens of Jerusalem. They shall prosper who love thee, Jerusalem. Peace be upon thy walls, O Jerusalem. I think that's Psalm 122. And then the same people they were taken into captivity because of disobedience. He said in that land of captivity, pray for the peace of that land. Because in their peace will be your peace. Let us not turn Nigeria to an abandoned ship where everybody is jumping out of it. Even in those lands, you will realize that you are in Nigeria. Whether you bought, you know, there are now some Caribbean countries, some of those um, Caribbean islands with um, about 70 to 100,000 US dollars, you can buy citizenship. If you want me to inform you, if you consult me, I will, I will tell you. With 70, 100,000, depending on how strong that society is and the habitable conditions, 100,000 US dollars, you can become a citizen. And that citizenship can make you travel to up to 8,100 nations. You will not need a visa. Even to go to Ghana here as a Nigerian, you might need some, some clearance. <laughs> anyway, so let's invest in this nation. The old amongst us, the young amongst us, and everyone in between. Let's invest in this nation. Even while you are planning, you want to go to Canada, you want to go to England, you want to go to America, let us invest. It will amaze you the level of... Um, well, I call that reparation. Funds Nigerians are brought send home every year. I think last year was more than 20 billion US dollars. That's heavy. Let us pray for our nation. We've prayed for our nation this morning. I think my time is exhausted in that. Let's pray for our nation. Let's invest in our nation. Even where you are able to run abroad, to that Canada you want to run to. How about your uncle? How about your auntie? How about your school teacher that you love? How about your neighbor that you are you carrying everybody along? How about your grandparents? Even if you buy citizen and say, Look, uh, my Pekin, at this my age, just leave me here. So let's wish our country the best. Let's delight the desire the best for our nation. Some of us who are going to school don't go to school with the mind of they will employ me. If they don't employ you, what can you do for yourself? What skill can you learn? What portable skill are you engaging? Are you developing? And some of these things, they're not even so capital intensive. It's just a matter of creativity. It's a matter of resourcefulness. What can you do? I told my daughter, I want you to learn this one. Me and the, the, my wife, the mom, she's telling us, no, we want to learn. I said, this one is not commercial. I don't, don't come and waste my time here. And then she changed her face. And me too, I looked the other way. Learn this. The brother too, I told him, learn a portable skill. Have a portable gift. So that whatever they are paying you where you are working is even extra. You know how to command what you want. You can decide this week, I'm not working Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I just want to work Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Because you, you command, you have a skill, you have an ability. Parents should teach this to their children. Don't just send them, go and do engineering, go and do uh, law and all that. What other thing can they do? And it's within every one of us. The way God created every one of us, there is something else. It could be singing, it could be music production, it could be an ICT ability, it could be hands-on skills with fabric, with hair, whatever. Develop it. Don't be idle. Stretch yourself. Develop it. And it will amaze you what you can bring to the table for yourself and then you even begin to employ other people. And the Lord bless Nigeria. The Lord cause his face to shine upon Nigeria. Look, if you don't say amen, you will say after me. The Lord bless Nigeria. Yeah. The Lord cause his face to shine upon Nigeria. Yeah. Peace be upon the walls of our nation, Nigeria. Yeah. Nigeria shall be great. Nigeria shall be famous for good things. Yeah. 
Nigeria will be celebrating the community of nations. People of diverse nations, um, Caucasian nations, um, Asian nations, diverse nations, we hold on to Nigerians and say, come and teach us how did you do it? How did you turn it around? It shall come to pass in this nation. Nigeria will be great in the name of Jesus. And then someone says, we are 63 years old. Yeah. But the way nations develop is different from the way human beings develop. A 10-year-old human being may be able to do this and that. A 10-year-old nation might not be able to do it. Let's give ourselves hope. Let's see optimism. Let's speak optimism. Let's find optimism. Even where it doesn't look like it. Keep speaking. I read the Bible sometimes and I wonder. In the last few days, I was studying some parts of Isaiah. I said, God, even me that I've been reading this book for several decades, I don't understand one of these things you are saying. Are they supposed to happen now? Are they supposed to happen some other time? And then I realized the prophetic flow. They speak those things because in their times, they will have their mates. Some of those things may not happen immediately. Go and read those books of the prophets. Some of those things are still hanging. Some of those things have become like low-hanging fruits that can be plucked by someone who catches the revelation and demonstrates faith. It is not everything that will speak now that may come to pass now, but everyone will come to pass in their times and seasons. I speak over nation Nigeria. I speak over government. I speak over government officials. I speak over governance. Nigeria will be great. We will have, the system will throw up visionary leaders. The electoral process and the selection of ministers and cabinet members will throw up visionary leaders. Progressive, progressively, our nation, we have visionary leaders. Our nation, we have servant leaders. In the mighty name of Jesus, we speak into the elements, we speak into the firmaments, we speak over the whole landscape of our nation, Nigeria. The word of God will govern this nation. The word of God will pilot this nation. The word of God will influence this nation, influence the citizens, influence the people, influence the teenagers, influence the youths, influence the adults in our nation in the name of Jesus. The potentials of Nigeria, human resource potentials, natural resource potentials, mineral resource potentials will be cultivated. The potentials of this nation will be cultivated. The potentials of this nation will come to light. The potentials of this nation will add value to people, add value to Nigerians, add value in the International Committee of Nations in the name of Jesus. Those who rape us lose their power. Those who rape us lose their strength. Those who rape us lose their potency in the name of Jesus. We speak peace over our land. From the north to the south, from the east to the west. We speak peace over our land. We speak prosperity over our nation. We speak prosperity over the people. We speak prosperity over the weather. We speak prosperity over the landscape. In the mighty name of Jesus. Nigeria will be great in our lifetime. In Jesus name. While I was studying the early hours of the morning, I just felt I needed to put some other things on my mind. So I opened the papers and then I saw uh, online, newspaper online. I saw this guy in Kano State, a tricycle driver who um, carried passengers. And one of them forgot a box in his tricycle. So when he parked to have his prayer according to his religion, he realized that there was a box in his tricycle. He opened the box and then he saw it was money. He didn't even check it. He didn't even count. He didn't even think about it. Immediately he started looking for the people he dropped. Nowhere to be found. Went home, told the mom what had happened. The mom said, please tell your dad. The dad together, they asked questions. Tried to ransack the whole place where I had carried passengers. Nothing happened. And after a few days, the mom said, I had a, an announcement on the radio. 
that some people are looking for some money they forgot in a tricycle ah beautiful so and the mom was also smart enough wrote the number of the people who made the announcement they called the number severally the first day nobody picked the line then the following day they were able to get so they said okay we'll come to your house the owners of the park they said no let's meet at the radio station where you made the announcement so to cut the long story short about 19 million naira was returned and there were two sides on one side people are cursing him people are blaming him that your sole opportunity to make it in life you threw it away you can never make it again in this life and many of us nigerians in our minds were like that ah, not be me <laughs> 19 million to pledge itself make it be two million inside my own keke na uh, try me first me wait on the loop for visa to this place and visa to that place and on the other side they celebrated him um, the people who owned the 19 million gave him about 400,000 and some other parastatals uh, orientation agencies gave him money then one man came and said look this kind of person you are I have two daughters I want to give them to you marry them and he was not the only one seriously one read his punch <laughs> for real punch go and read it they donated four women to this one guy <laughs> i know his religion made room for that four so the press guy interviewed and said so will you marry he said uh, i'm not even though the caption was attracted me because the caption was a man who returned four million giving four wives ah. so i was thinking did he actually take it but when you read the interview completely different from the caption he said that is not even on his mind now he's thinking of maybe going to school and that he will think about it later so my own question this morning is will you be among the people blessing him or among the people cursing him saying the only opportunity in his life to make it now after all those people 19 million do you know that they stole from somewhere they stole from governments and all that just answer that question in your own conscience will know whether you are part of the old nigeria or the new nigeria we are bathing <laughs> where righteousness and holiness reign praise the lord so let's love our nation please you may have great privileges to buy citizenship other nations go on vacation do part-time work there come back home there will be no place i can assure you i've traveled a little bit there is no place like home. let's get into god's word this morning we've been looking into the, the love walk walking in love and so much has been said over the weeks we had a conference over the past weekend um last week and we had a guest pastor mrs ruth afolabi and she spoke very profoundly a minister to us especially from the married context between men and their wives and wives uh, women and their husbands and challenged us that the subject of love is not just for the man or the woman the subject of submission is not just for the man or the woman both ways love both ways submission both ways beautiful today i want to take a little take things a little bit further on what i call love in the local assembly law in the local assembly let us pray father we thank you for your presence once again we thank you for people from all walks of life physically present remotely present on the online platforms we thank you for the privileges of life physical life that we have and we don't take for granted your goodness in our lives your mess in our lives it's of your mercies that we're not consumed your mercies never fail great is your faithfulness we thank you father for the added privileges of the divine life having faith in the living god seeing having hope beyond natural situations and environmental and um, limitations our expectation is in you and said the expectation of the righteous shall not be cut off we thank you for the intangibles we enjoy from your throne of peace of mind that passes human understanding 
of joy unspeakable and full of glory of the love of god that that that, that surpasses anything this world can offer lord we look to you this morning as we look into your word representing various shades of life various walks of life various challenges in life various estates in life we ask that the power in your word we gain entrance into our lives and thereby gaining entrance into the spheres of life we represent we ask that the transforming power of your word will flow into our lives the healing power in your word the revelatory power of your word the power of your word that is able to bring direction bring hope bring repentance and bring deliverance let the, the 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 limitless resources in your world gain entrance into our lives we thank you father because we are prayed in jesus name as we look into this subject of love in the local assembly we have established amongst other things to us love as it is in the world by the concept of the world by the system of the world if the love by the concept of the world by the system of the world is rooted in self love according to the world the system of the world uh, understands love in the context of what is in it for me if i get into this marriage what is in it for me this is your church you've been telling me to come and be a part of what is in it for me if i uh, get into that city if i go into that street what is in it for me self is at the root of love system the love culture in the world self is exalted over others and self is prioritized over others the commonwealth is connected to self because of self-love that is found in the world the love of the world is defined and described and has the symptom of self at the center of it. It is materialistic. It values things, values people, values opportunities, values jobs. Many people want to work not even for the value they can add to the organization. Many people want to work because they are thinking just of money. I told my um, son when he was much younger, don't look for what to do. Don't determine your course. Don't look for where to work on the basis of the money you earn. What value are you bringing to the table? Because if you're able to bring value at the low end, it's also what will shoot you up to the high end. The love context of the world, the love concept of the world is rooted in materialism. So it is measured on the basis of money. It is measured on the basis of things. It is measured on the basis of houses and cars and designer footwear and designer bags. That is love according to the world. But the Bible makes us to understand when you study First John chapter 2 from verse 15 to verse 17. Such love expires. Such love has a timeline. All that is in the world and the love of it passes away. You find that in verse 17. But the one who walks in the love of God endures abides forever the world is passing and the lost the carnal desires the lost system of the world is lustful is materialistic so you see people get into relationships for materialism oh it gave me a lift i like that car and because of the car not because of the guy you fall yakata I love the way she moves the curvature ah my head does the turn does the turn every time i see her moving my head does the turn does the turn let the word of god turn your head back don't let me dwell too long on this love according to the world the world's understanding of love is sensual based on feelings is materialistic money things house designer products the love according to the world is self-centered selfish self-preserving self-promoting self-recognizing at the expense of others 
the others may be your spouse the others may be your children what will make a man to carry another man's girlfriend or girlfriend in the making or wife to an hotel and you empty your children's school fees on her for real and the children have been asking daddy why are you going to pay our school fees they've been tracking us in school that they will chase us away if we don't pay say, let us believe god and one moment of coverture movement you empty the whole money that could have been used to pay for the children's school empty it on coverture that's the love of the world it is sensual it is materialistic it is self-centered and he does not love others i read in second um, timothy chapter 3 you read from verse 3 to verse 4 it talks about the lack capacity to love others lovers of self lovers of pleasure lovers of money rather than i mean lovers of pleasure and that is verse one lovers of self lovers of money and you get to verse four lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of god what god loves is what they hate what god hates is what they love that's the world concept but let's leave that the god concept of love we've taken time to teach us to share with us and one thing behind god's love is i mean one thing behind the redemption plan i want to see that god will look at men on the expressway of sin sinful lifestyles sinful thoughts sinful relationships on a cruise to hell to eternal damnation and then he, he thought about it but i don't want these people to perish i don't want these people to die i don't want these people to be eternally disconnected eternally doomed and then what did he use to bring us back no love is god's redeeming tool love is god's redemption tool but that love is not the love that thinks of self he thought of us we all like sheep have gone astray first peter and chapter 2 makes us to understand we all like sheep have gone astray everyone chosen his own way this one chosen the way of fraud this one chosen the way of laziness this one chosen the way of womanizing this one chosen chosen the way of a gigolo this one chosen the way of a pimp this one chosen the way of cheating on the job we all like sheep have gone astray everyone has chosen his own way he said but we are brought back that bringing back is god's redeeming power is god's redeeming plan it's the tool for redemption is love for god so loved the world he gave so that we don't perish so that we don't get eternally into damnation out of love with the tool of love he's redeeming us and he's still in the job or the business or the ministry of redeeming us some of us were going astray you know you are going to a damnable relationship you know your your, your feet is almost slipping away from the faith you know this thing you are doing this phone call you are making this text messaging you are making every time it starts it starts your heart jumps but your flesh self tells you nothing nothing will happen even men of god are doing it that thing warns you and checks you that is god's redeeming tool love telling you my son don't go astray my daughter don't go astray don't do that don't think in that line one two of redemption one two for redemption is god's law he loves us he said i've loved you with an everlasting love and with my loving kindness i have drawn you are you still in here this morning and so in case you are here you are wondering what brings you back to god it's not going to be the power of your gift it's not going to be the offerings you make it's not going to be the vehicle you give your pastor it's not going to be the house you build for god it is god that work he said we love him it's only in response we love him because he first 
No man has the capacity to love for God, to love like God, to love the Lord, to love people like God loves them, unless God has initiated something. We love him. And I like to add, we love like him. And I like to add, we love for him. Love people for him. Love God like him. Love children for him. Love spouse for him. We love him because he first loved us. And so sharing some thoughts on God's love here. Love is God's redemption too. It redeems us from darkness, he redeems us from disease, he redeems us from destruction, he redeems us from damnation because of his eternal law. Somebody sets yourself with a sense of focus and value on God and what he's doing in your life. Say, God loves me. You might be rejected by people, rejected by family, rejected by neighbors, rejected by potential employers, but set yourself this morning, God loves me. Second thought on God's love. Love is the motivation for Jesus' life. Jesus' ministry. Jesus' death on the cross. All motivated by love. The son of God became the son of man. That he might bring the sons of men to become the sons of God. We all like sheep are going astray. By the grace of God, Jesus tasted death for every man. Love was at the heart of it. Heaven was not empty. Heaven is not empty. And yet, God wants to populate heaven with people who are on the expressway, on a cruise, on autopilot to hell. Love was at the center of Jesus yielding his life. Yielding his position in the class of God as God on the right hand of the Father to take the form of a man. Love was at the center. Jesus' life on earth, Jesus' ministry, going from city to village, going from synagogue to seaside to preach, to teach, to demonstrate the power of the kingdom, the power of the age to come, to heal, to save, to deliver. All the things he did was not to show off. One who wants to show off will display himself. It will hide. It will work miracles. It will hide. It will heal. It will say, go and report yourself to the priest. Before they come back, he is gone. They told him, all men seek you. He said, I'm not seeking a popularity contest, trying to win it. I must go to other towns and villages for this purpose. The son of man has come. He did not come for popularity. He came out of love. Love will make a whole son of God to defy stigmatization. To defy social stigma to defy cultural stigma and preach to a woman who was probably like a glorified harlot because she had been with about five six men that she called husbands but they were not love was at the center of preaching to the woman by the well of samaria love is at the center of reaching out to you and showing you mercy and not imputing our trespasses my trespasses your trespasses against us love is at the center Love took him to the cross. Love kept him on the cross. Not the nails. Not the Roman soldiers. No power of this life could keep him on the cross. No man takes it from me. Of my will I lay it down. Of my will I take it up again. This honor I have received of my father. Jesus himself spoke that before he was nailed to the cross. No power of this life could keep him on the cross. Love kept him on the cross. Love for himself? No. Love for fame? No. Love for power? No. Love for a throne? He had a throne before he came. So he said, John chapter 17, Father, restore me to the glory I have always had with you before the war began. Before he came, he had a throne. He was simply on the cross as a pathway back to the throne. Whatever Jesus did, whatever death he died, the pains on the cross, the nails in his hands, the spear to his side were all done in love. That's on a level, on a third level. Some love thoughts here. Love is the proof 
of being God's children and disciples. You claim you are a child of God. You claim you belong to Jesus. It's not the church you, where you worship that validates that. It's not the pastor that mentors you and teaches and disciples you that validates that. You claim to be a disciple of Jesus. It's not the size of your vehicle. I remember many years ago in this city, the head of this ministry now, I, I had assassins chased him out of town. But let me leave it at that. So many years ago, they went to this town hall in a section of the city and they met a church there led by my friend of blessed memory now also. They said, we are here to start our own church, a branch of the man of God's church. He said, well, there is a church already here. Maybe we can use this time, and then you use this time, or we go upstairs, or you. He said, no. That you people, you are all these teach, teach people teaching. Our own church, we are for dominion. We have come to take over. We have not come to share anything. We have come to take over. <laughs> Because that's what they are taught. You meet an existing church, a word-based church, a God-fearing church, a spirit-filled church, and you are threatening them that you've come to vacate them. That is your own church that does all these, uh, uh, you teach, love your neighbor. We, we are for dominion. We take over. Church taking over church. Let me get this started. Until hired assassins took over the seat of the man of God in this city. The proof that you are a Jesus child, Jesus disciple, is love. Maybe I need to recalibrate or remind us of what this love is about. I'll just read through. The proof that you are a Jesus disciple, the proof that you are a child of God, the proof that you are born again is not your Jeep, is not your change of car, is not your change of moving away from Bundu Waterside to live in GRFS2, new GRFS2. Because those who don't know God can make such movements and such migration. The proof that you are a child of God is love as defined by God. Love as described by God. And maybe I need to run us through this again. The love that is patient. The love that is kind. The love that does not envy. The love that does not boast or brag about itself. We, we have not come to share anything. We have come to take over. Church taking over church. And such love that is not proud, such love that is not rude, such love that is not self-seeking, self-promoting, such love that is not easily angered, easily provoked, such love that keeps no record of wrong, does not delight in evil, but rejoices when truth wins, truth prevails. Are you for me on this TV screen? God, I'm seeing wonders on this TV show. <laughs> love keeps no the love we are talking about, the love that will prove that you are a Jesus disciple, that you are born again, child of God's spirit field, is such love that keeps no record of wrong, such love that always protects, such love that always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Such love that never fails, lasts forever. Such love that compels us. Ah, the thing I would have done to that person. If not for Jesus. If Jesus would just allow me, just for two minutes, I'll quickly come back to my normal self as a believer. Let Jesus just allow me for two minutes. Let me show him something. That's not the law we're talking about. Because it says, this love from God, it, it compels. One Daniel says, it controls. It says no to the will of the flesh. It says no to the lust of the flesh. It says no 
That is the law we're talking about. And the proof that you are a child of God, you are born again, you are spiritual. It's not even the tongues. We addressed that discovery service just a few days ago on Wednesday. Not that you can speak in tongues and you lack love. You can have faith to move mountains and you lack love. You can be so benevolent. You are even willing to give your body as a matire. Do you know that matires are not only in the Christian faith? You have more in some other religion. You have some in some religions. They do what they call self-immolation. They put themselves on fire. I remember when I was more younger than I used to read novels. 500, 800 no, um, paid novels. You see some of those eastern cultures. They will put a sword like this and sit on it. The whole length of the blade. I think it's called seppuku or something like that. And take their life. But here we are saying the proof that you are a child of God. Born again. Is that you are able to demonstrate such love that carries these features. Here Jesus himself speaking here. John chapter 13. I'd like to read from verse 34 to verse 35. He said a new commandment I give to you. And what readily comes to mind is what he said in Matthew chapter 5. We begin to read from about verse 43. He said, it has been said to you, an eye for an eye, um, a tooth for tooth. He said, but now I say to you. Now I say to you also means a new commandment of a higher order. A new commandment I give to you. That you love one another as I have loved you. That you also love one another. By this all will know. Not just the church, but the world. The society. People who, who disregard church. People who speak despicably about the things of God. When they see certain oppressions of love. Your manner of love. He said by this all will know that you are my disciples. How? If you have love for one another. And I've come to challenge House of His Presence particularly today. And those who are connected to us in various platforms, in various locations, and various ministries, and various people. This is the love call. That we don't just talk about love in the society and in our families and between husband and wife in the local church there must be demonstration of God's law we need to recognize that practically all that God has proposed to do and planned to do the church of the living God is his earthly visible outpost He wants to redeem. He wants to love. He wants to forgive. He wants to care. He wants to heal. He wants to deliver. All that are within the plans and purposes of God. He wants to release through his visible earthly outpost. The church. There is a great demand on every local church. That is really led by Jesus. There is a high call on the body of believers in every local church. Yes, we're able to love our spouses. Yes, we're able to love our boss when salary is paid as I went due. Or when there is a salary raise. Or there, when there is a, uh, a recommendation for an international conference with some appropriate Esther code in dollars. Ah, I love that boss. It'd be better person. But you see, beyond whatever other expressions of love out there, in the church, house of his presence, we are God's outpost. We are God's outstation. We are God's visible territory for proving that there is a God who rules in the affairs of men.
I wrote in my notes here, domicile within the church are the purposes and works of God on the earth. The church is the visible outpost for the works of Jesus. The things he started in his earthly ministry that are meant to be continued until we see him in the clouds and the trumpet sound of the angels. These are th the things Jesus started that he wants to see us do and completed. They are to be carried out through the church. On passage in scriptures, when we read Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 10, he said that to the intent, this is God's intention, that unto principalities and unto powers in the heavenly places might be made known through the church the manifold wisdom of God. And not only into spiritual forces, principalities, and powers, but also to everyone in here amongst ourselves. There must be a responsibility to love, a representation of God's love, a demonstration of God's love amongst ourselves. You, many places in scriptures, maybe another day, another time, I'll show us in the New Testament, you will see several places love one another. Have love one for another. And child of God, carrier of grace, carrier of God's love, he says, let us do good. Galatians chapter 6 from verse 9 to verse 10. Please let me project that. Let us do good to those of the household of faith. And do good to all men, especially to those of the household of faith. Let us not grow weary. Get back to verse 9. Let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not lose heart. Verse 10. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all neighbors, included in all family, included in all colleagues, included in all old alumni of your school, included in all business associates, included in all. Then it escalated it, especially. Do good to all, benchmark. Then escalate it particularly to those who are of the household of faith. My submission as I begin to round up here today is do we love one another? House of his presence. Believers in this local church, do we really love one another? As God loves. I've led us in prayer in this house when we started taking these teachings. Uh, to get that God give us capacity to receive his love give us capacity to respond to his love give us capacity to be responsible for his love the God type of love and also capacity to represent because you can receive and you are not responding a drum a plastic drum receives water receives oil but it's never changed by the content but the soil receives water and the soil becomes loamy. The soil becomes fruitful. The soil can produce whatever is planted into it as a result of the water not only received but responded to. We are not just meant to be containers of his love. We are meant to reflect this love of God. We are meant to respond to the love of God. We are meant to be responsible for it. We are meant to represent it. House of his presence, do we love one another? Amongst the married people, do we love one another? Amongst the young unmarried people, do we love? I've taken time to take us through the detour. We're not talking of love according to the world that thinks of self. If there's nothing for me in your church, I know they go down your kind church again. Me, I, me, 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 I want better church. Where did they take care of person? Don't be all this kind thing. Join this, join that. And I make you Jesus. I say, make you not give me a job. You know, they give me work. Give me church work. Now that one I go shop. House of his presence amongst the teenagers. Do we love one another? Across the bridge from the married to the singles, do we love one another? 
and have shared with us. We're not talking of carnal love. We're not talking of a married man eyeing for lustful intentions, a single sister. We have knocked down that type of love. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking of that love that is simple at heart, that believes all things, that is pure at heart and cares for the other and exalts the other above self. That's what we're talking about. From the singles to the married, do we love one another? Single sisters, probably up to in, in their 30s, probably up to 40. Do you love married sisters who are in their 20s and they already have three children? Single brother, you are in your 30s. You, just, you don't even have school sats. Do you love that young brother who just finished school, finished and just got a powerful job with a six-digit um, income on it? Do we love such people? Can we love regardless of our social estate? Do we love regardless of our own present challenges? It is love that will make the likes of Zechariah and his wife Elizabeth. These were like pastors in contemporary language. They were praying for others. Signs were happening. Child dedication was going on. And they go back to an empty home. And they did not stop praying. It has to be love. Beyond self. House of his presence. Do we love? Like God loved. Don't worry, I have intended to shoot my time. So keep counting. I Today, I'm going to shoot my time. Don't worry. All right. So love in the local assembly. If I'm going to live up to our purpose and potentials as a local church and serving as a visible outpost of God's work on earth today, there are certain things we should look out for. Do we love one another? The kind of love God has described, the kind of love God's word has shown us. Do we love one another? Do we care for other people's children? Do we care to help to just give a lift along the way? Even if it takes you out of your route. One of our young men he had told me uh, some days earlier that um, he was going to university. I said, oh, wow, congratulations. Pray for him. Then a few days later in midweek service, a few days ago, I saw him in service. I said, oh, but I called you. you I, your phone was not on. He said, oh, maybe you called this other. And then he gave me this other line. And then after service, he said, Pastor, can you drop me off? In my mind, I was thinking, where you are going is not the way I'm going. And I could have been big man enough to tell him that. But in my mind, immediately I just felt, it won't cost me too much just to take that other route. And I took a route I would not normally take because of a teenager. Anybody can quote anything. Anybody can say anything. But he says, by so doing, you will show all that you are my disciples. Can you meet a church member on the road and behave like you know her? Let me sing that word in a song again. First John chapter 4 from verse 7 to verse 8. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God. And knoweth God. He that loveth not, knoweth not God. For God is love. Beloved, let us love. One another, first John 4 7 and 8. House of His presence. Are we walking in love? Are we fulfilling scriptures of walking in love, of living in love, of demonstrating the love of God? Let me read a passage, please. Let me project. I think it's Ephesians chapter 5, from verse 1 to verse 2. Ephesians chapter 5, from verse 1 to verse 2. It says, therefore be 
imitators of God as dear children, valued children. And in doing that, imitating God, knowing we are his children, a major feature of that life is walking law. In our relationships, walking law. In our church life, walking law. After we share the benediction and we are going at different places, that we continue to walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for his sweet smelling aroma. Quickly in closing here today, the love demands in a local church. Number one, let us love one another. Let the young love the young. Let the young love the old. Let the old love the old. Let the old love the young. Let the brothers love the brothers. Let the brothers love the sisters. Let the children love the teenagers. Let music team love sound people even when they are not cooperating. And you know your voice is powerful but it's sounding terrible. Let us love one another. In very simple, practical ways. Most of us have not seen God. No man has seen God. But the way we relate to one another shows that one, we know God and we respond to him and represent him. I'm not able to get into those scriptures today. From first John chapter 3, first John chapter 4. But listen to this. Let us love one another. I read that passage again. A new commandment I give to you. Jesus speaking here. That you love one another. As I have loved you. That you also love one another. By this all will know that you are my disciples. If you love. If you have love one for another. John chapter 13 from verse 34 to verse 35 quickly number two in the local church love in the local church let love in the local church be without hypocrisy king james says love without dissimulation let us love without hypocrisy romans chapter 12 from verse 9 to verse 10 I'm reading a New Living Translation here. It says, don't just pretend to love others. Don't just pretend to love others. I will get to, I think it's message translation. It talks about putting on a mask. Or maybe it's the Passion Translation. We will need to read that. But here it says, don't just pretend to love others. Really love them. Hate what is wrong. Hold tightly to what is good. Love each other with genuine affection. He says here, and take delight in honoring each other. Take delight in honoring each other. I want to read another translation here. The message translation says, love from the center of who you are. Don't fake it. Run for dear life from evil. One translation says, run from all appearance of evil. He said, run for dear life from evil. Hold on for dear life to good. Verse 10. Be good friends who love deeply. New Living says genuinely. Message says deeply. Practice playing second fiddle. You know the meaning of that? Prioritizing the other person. Giving honor to the other person. Love does not exalt itself. Love does not brag itself. Love condescends to men of low estate. Practice playing. 
Even not just because we have families who are members of the church. Even in your marriage. Give honor to that partner. Stand back. Step back. Out of law. House of his presence. Amongst workers. Amongst members. Amongst the youths. Amongst leaders. Let us love that is genuine. Let us not fake it. Let me read the Passion Translation here because I think our media people don't have that translation. The Passion Translation here says, Let the inner movement of your heart always be to love one another and never play the role of an actor wearing a mask. The mask gives a false impression. The real thing is behind the mask. So it says here, let the inner movement of your heart always be to love one another and never play the role of an actor wearing a mask. Despise evil and embrace everything that is good and virtuous. Let us love one another without hypocrisy. Another way of putting it, let us love one another without eye service. Let our love be genuine. And don't just start it, sustain it. I see some of our people sometimes, when they join the church, they say, ah, thank God for this fantastic addition. See zeal, see love. But somewhere along the line, I don't know where the strange influences come. You begin to see them gradually stand back, step back. See, I am quite sharp with discerning. When someone who used to be in the forefront begins to scale back, begins to step back, cannot even look into your eyes anymore, I know something is going wrong. And I keep watching. Seeing in this house, people when they join, it's like a house on fire. Give me this, I will do it. Look at that one, I will do it. Then gradually, no be me, keep Jesus, I bet. Let me take care of my family first. Let them do it in the days when we are still when we are on fire. So, what are you on now? On water. You know the amazing thing. Many a times, when the fire of God, the fire of judgment comes in the days of Moses' leadership, and they're all around the camp, the fire used to start from far from that divine presence. He said, "Those are the outskirts of the camp." Because it's not just a distance thing that, oh, it's because of a crowd, we are not able to come closer. Many a times, it starts from the outskirts because of a heart thing. The heart is losing the love content, the love quotient, the love expression. House of his presence, let us love without hypocrisy. House of his presence, let us love without eye service. Love that is genuine. Love that is pure. Love that wishes others what we wish ourselves. That we don't think the best for ourselves. We don't think anything for others. Genuine love. And lastly, here for me. Don't just love in war. Put it into action. I read in 1 John chapter 5 from verse 1 to verse 3. It talks about if you love me, you will be my commandment. And my commandments are not great. Jesus speaking in that place, we've quoted several times today. A new commandment I give to you that you love one another. Let us not just love in word. Let us love in action. Prove it. You love God, prove it. You love the things of God, show it. It will never be affirmed by lip service, by what we say. It is proved by what we do. First John chapter 3 here, and I close with this. Don't just love in word, like I said, put it into action. First John chapter 3. I'd like to read from verse 16 to verse 18. I'm reading the New Living Translation. 
He says, we know what real love is. Because Jesus gave up his life for us. He didn't just say, you know, guys, I love you. But you know, I'm up there in heaven enjoying myself. Just as you are struggling, just have it at the back of your mind. That there's someone in heaven <laughs> who loves you. He came down. He took the form of a man. He was humbled in taking the form of a man. He was humbled further in dying the death of the cross. That was loving demonstration. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. For the son so loved the world, he surrendered himself. If I may ask, what has love cost you? Because true love will cost you something. True love will cost you forgiveness. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 12, it says, love covers multitude of sins. Some spouses find it difficult to forgive their wives. Ah! <laughs> Some wives find it difficult to forgive their husbands. Love covers. Love covers. In the house of God, you know some people stop joining some groups in church because of a little offense. I didn't like the way that person talked to me. Does she know my age? If, if she knows where I'm walking and my position there, she would not have talked to me like that. So I don't want anybody, I don't want any kid somewhere to insult me, you know. Let me just mind my lane. Let them mind their lane. By so doing, some have left some groups in church. Some as in some groups, they will never make a comment. Beep. I, I don't like, I don't uh, No, I, I respect my age. If nobody respects my age, I respect my age. I know who I am. Even that singer sang the song, I know who I am. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I don't know that one pastor is preaching. I know who I am. I don't want any, any nonsense. No, 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 no. Nonsense. I don't want any nonsense from anybody. I know my age. I respect myself. And I want people to respect me. Let us not love in word alone. There are many things that it is because of Jesus. We will have to take them. Normally, we will not take them. Our age will not allow us, will not even permit us to take them. But because of Jesus, that he did so much for me, what is the little thing I cannot do to forgive my wife? My dear wife, who loved me and left her family, left her family name and decided to follow me and took up my name. Said because he didn't put passengers, the kind of passengers I like inside Bangasu. I would, if, if I take it this time, they will start giving me war in this family. I will not take it again. <laughs> Friends, let us not war love in word only. Put it into action. Some of the action we include just to forgive. Forgive your team leader. In fact, forgive your pastor. <laughs> He just traveled like that six weeks. He just disappeared. He couldn't even call me that I will not be around. Though. Biko, forgive me. Please. <laughs> Can you imagine? What if something had happened to me when he traveled? He just, he, 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 he just, yeah, just like that. Please. Biko, oh, no, no. <laughs> I've come back. I've come to re resume my work. Okay. Some of the things you demonstrate as proof that you love is to tolerate. Sometimes the kind of things you tolerate, even the people who knew you for who you are, <laughs> even they are shocked that you can take this kind of thing you are taking now. I, I think you understand what I'm talking about. The people who knew you before, before. That they can do this to you and nothing happens. The sky did not come down. Ah! Even like I said, this Jesus thing, Arilo. 
love is not only in war. Let me close because the level I am now, I can continue another one. But look at this. We know what real love is. Because Jesus gave up his life for us. Put it in context. Who is this Jesus? Holy. Who is this Jesus? Son of God. Who is this Jesus? Worshipped in heaven. Who is this Jesus? Just that they get back to him on earth alone. Do you remember the heavenly host? Luke chapter 2 verse 15. That started to celebrate in the skyline. Glory to God in the highest. Amen. For his mercies. Because mercy has come to tabernacle with man. Who is this Jesus? Son of God. Full of power. But he gave his life for us. Us? Me? Oh. You don't want to know my former life. Before his blood. In, I mean was appropriated in my life. Before he rescued me. You don't want to know the kind of life. The kind of life. The kind of values I carried. And I'm sure I'm talking about some other people here. Maybe not majority. I know some of us were born again from our mother's womb. They asked one notable quote and unquote. He called himself a man of God. In fact, he called himself African prophet. They said, when did you get born again, sir? He said, from my mother's womb. <laughs> but let me leave that. So, look at all the wicked things. Look at all the vile things. Look at all the ungodly things we used to do. And yet... He did not even die for righteous. The Bible says in Romans chapter 5, when we read from verse 6 to verse 8, it says, Scarcely will a righteous man die for a righteous person. But this is a righteous man dying for wicked, unbelieving, evil minded sinner. That is law, real law. Now he challenges us, so we also. Somebody say, Me also ought to give up our lives for our brothers and sisters verse 17 we're going to verse 18 if someone has enough money to live well and sees his brother or sister in need and shows no compassion he says it is well with you and you are driving to presidential where the meal buffet on sunday with the drink especially if you like chapman like me no alcoholic chapman you may be spending twenty five thousand per person and you are going with a family of seven don't don't bother them bringing out your calculator just you are going with the family of seven just think about that and now that person two thousand naira the person will somersault from here to ordinance out of joy and excitement if someone has enough money to live well and sees a brother or sister in need but shows no comparison, i beg me i work for this money let everybody go and work for their money if you know what i did to get this money that is why there's no law the kind of things you did to get that money. That's why there's no law. If God was involved in lifting you, he said, how can you really claim God's love is inside such a person who lacks compassion? Verse 18. Dear children, let us not love merely. Let's not merely say that we love each other. Let us show the truth. So as we go into a new week, Going to a new month, going to a new quarter, last quarter of the year. We can be different. Just a switch in the heart, just a decision from the heart. And people might not see the change on your visage, in your garments, but God sees I got someone today to enroll in the house of love, to walk in love and prove it with actions. Dear children, Let's not merely say that we love each other. Let us show the truth. By our action. Shall we take a bow? Think about his love. Think about his goodness. Think about his grace that brought us true. For as high as the heavens above, so great is the measure of our Father's love. Great is the measure 
of our Father's love. Not too late to love in, to begin to love indeed. You are not too old to begin to love like God and love for God and love people the way God loves them. God's love is not racial. God's love is not prejudiced. God's love is not economically denominated. Loving rich people, despising poor people. No. He loves all. Think about his love that songwriter wrote. Think about his goodness. Think about his love that brought us through. I'd like you to pray for yourself today. Lord, make me a person of your love. Give me the capacity to love you. Give me the capacity to receive your love. The capacity to respond appropriately, positively to your love. To be responsible. You can, you, you, can, you can commit this space to me. You can commit this office to me. You can commit this marriage to me. As far as I'm concerned, nothing evil will happen to this marriage. This marriage will not collapse. Because I choose to be responsible for this love I've received from you in this marriage. In this local church, I choose to be your ambassador. Representing your love. Demonstrating your love. Showcasing your love. In any way you have enabled me it will cost god's love will cost you time god's love will cost you sacrifice god's love will cost you resources god's love will cost your talent god's love will cost your connections god's love may cost you everything that's why jesus said love your god with all your heart with all your soul with all your mind and love your neighbor as you love yourself. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I feel the spirit of the Lord walking a walk of healing, of cleansing, of washing, of repentance in our hearts right now. Those things that make for jealousy, that makes for bitterness, offenses, revenge, agenda. Carefully plotting that even if it would take me two years, I could do him back. Even if it would take me five years, I will be smiling, but I know my agenda. I know who I am. I will do her something. I feel the love of Jesus wading through such mindsets bringing healing bringing deliverance bringing restoration bringing mercy bringing compassion that we also may walk in his law chains are breaking yokes are breaking captivities are turning the years of cankerworm and locust and palmer worms and caterpillars have been restored. Uh, the goodness of God is being restored. Captivities are being turned. Lawful captives have been delivered. Love wins. Love reigns. God's love feels everywhere. Let us pray. I'd like to pray for you. Father, thank you for so much of your presence. Your love presence. Your charitable presence. Already in this atmosphere. Oozing into the clouds to connect those who are remotely part of this meeting. Lord, heal us. Lord, save us. Lord, deliver us. Save us from ourselves and the self-destruct buttons we are pressing. The self-destruct pathways we are walking. Save us from ourselves and help us to love in deed and in truth. 
Help us to love fellow church members in deed and in truth. Help us to love single sisters, love single brothers, love married people, love teenagers, love children, love all people in deed and in truth. By so doing, all will know that we are your disciples. We receive help today. And we receive the power of your love. We receive the transforming power of your love. We receive the liberating power of your law. Thank you, Father. As many as have been held captive and as a result of such lawful captivities, they are denied of a better life, better lot, greater estate. Uh, held captive against their will, but really as lawful captives. That power is broken right now. That yoke is destroyed right now. A new commandment. To love as Jesus loves. To love one another. To prove our discipleship in Jesus. Thank you. For we have prayed in Jesus name. I like the pastors and the deacons in the house to join me at the communion table if you are receiving of this communion i'd like you to stand to your feet those who qualify to receive of the communion are children of god members of the body of christ you know you are born again you know you are a child of god you know you are a recipient of god's love And as you stand, I'd just like you to pray for yourself in two dimensions. That God will help you to receive his love and represent that love in your marriage, in the house of God, in business, everywhere you find yourself, everywhere you go. To receive his love and to represent that love everywhere. In receiving that love, his healing power will also flow into your life. The power that turns captivities, that delivers lawful captives, will flow into your life. The power that sets captives free will flow into your life. And you will also represent his law. Father, we dedicate this communion table. We dedicate this communion items. As we all receive of your body and your blood in this in this moment, let your life and your love be transmitted into our hearts. Let it quicken within us the capacity to love you, to love like you love, to love what you love, and to represent your love in every place. Thank you, Father, because we are praying in Jesus' name. We like the leaders please help us to share with the people there are some of the people on the gallery help us to share maybe one person should just go up to the gallery and start from the gallery the office up there and then also go to the back where we have some of our children church um, workers and then if you still have materials you can still join us in the hall all right thank you We're going to receive the communion items together. So when you receive, I mean, we're going to receive the communion together. So when you receive the communion items, you just continue praying until other people have received the items of the communion. Pray for yourself. The love of God. The power of his love. Filling your life. Filling your home. Filling your conduct. Filling your role in international house of his presence. Filling your role beyond the gates of Zion, beyond church. People might not know that you are a child of God, but by your deeds, they will get to realize this person is different. Talks differently. Conducts himself, herself differently. Does not rejoice in iniquity. Rejoices in the truth.
Pray for yourself. Pray for everything you represent. That the love of God will, will permeate your life. Will saturate your life. Will influence your thoughts and your deeds. Pray for yourself. Even as I pray for myself. Help us to love, help us to love, help us to love, help us to love you. No man can love you except your love is poured within him or her by your Holy Spirit. Teach us to love you and help us to walk in love. Help us to love like you love. Your love is patient. Your love is kind. Your love perseveres. Your love does not rejoice in iniquity. Your love does not brag itself. Your love is not rude. Your love does not assert itself. It's either my way or no way. Lord, help me to love like you love. Deliver me from self-love. Deliver me from love that is selfish. Love that is materialistic. Love that loves things. Love pleasures. Loves the world. And does not love God. Deliver me. Save me. Save me from myself. You're the only one. I lean on. Save me, save me from myself. You're the only one to set me free. Save me from myself. You're the only one to set me free. Kadesha kanda yeta paraski bati ne do kanda kadeshi kanda yata. Zora be kando reka sopra gidiya, a de paros ke pande jaye shaga baros sopra gidiya ta. Are we ready to receive the communion? Are we all ready? Is there anyone who wants to receive the communion? Who is here to receive the items of the communion? I'm seeing some hands on the gallery. I thought the people on the gallery have been attended. To. I'm seeing some hands on the gallery. Can we attend to them on the gallery? On the gallery. Is anyone attending to the people on the gallery? One of the things that can help us to have a seamless flow when when we are taking the communion check the people in the hall before we have the communion so that that will advise you on the number of people to attend to let's keep praying i think they're trying to attend to people on the gallery let's keep praying pray for yourself pray for house of his presence that will be a house of love We'll not measure ourselves by things. We'll not measure ourselves by ourselves. We'll measure ourselves by love. Do I really love? Does pastor really love? Do I really love pastor? Do I really love people who sit around me? What if I have even made to make a new friend, to know a new person? Do I really love or I think I'm going to a teaching center? This is not a teaching center. A teaching center can be plastic. You are taught, you go. This church is the pillar and ground of the truth. It's where, it's a primary place where love must be demonstrated. It's not just to your tent, O Israel. Do your own thing and step out. No, this is not a teaching center. 
this is the house of God, the pillar and ground of the truth. Where we need to connect with God and connect with one another. It's not uh, a variety. When we rush out to try to get, get people at the gates, we just want to try to connect with some one or two or three more people, new people, no names, no faces. We can take up some things that can help us to connect better. How come we're in church one year, we don't know any new person other than our new house help? Or that person they told you can give you a job is working in an oil company mm -mm. that is self are we done attending to people I hope this lapse will not repeat itself. But this is obviously a lapse today. We should be improving. And very simple solution to that. You come to church. You are handling the Holy Communion arrangements. Just count the number of people in the hall. That will give you an idea of the people to attend to. Once you are serving, filling 200 cups. And there are 220 you know you need to make extra provision and we have extra cups if that is the problem we have extra cups i think we have up to 500 cups are we ready Let's receive of his body together. Let's receive of his blood together. Lord, with honor and with reverence, we partake of your body. We partake of the new covenant in your blood we recognize the authority you carry or you said in your word as he is so are we in this world you are the epitome of love you are love personified you demonstrated love in taking the form of a man and coming to the earth and dying as a man on Calvary's cross. Lord, we ask of you today, as many as have received of this communion, online, on site, on the gallery, in the children's church, in this main hall, let the power of your love flow into the recesses of our being. Let it push out the works of the flesh. Let it push out the sinful nature. Let it push out uh, sinful thoughts, associations, and lifestyles. By this communion, we receive capacity to love the Lord. Capacity to love like God loves. Capacity to love what God loves capacity to be responsible for this love and capacity to represent God's love in every space even in the house of God and we also pray for people in here today as many as have received of this communion and carrying one ailment or the other in their bodies sickness in the body infirmity in the body by the power of the resurrected Christ, we speak that such infirmities are rebuilt in Jesus' name. May God's healing power flow into such lives. May God, God's healing power flow into such bodies. 
May God's healing power flow into the blood streams of such people and bring forth divine healing in the name of Jesus. Lord, make us a body of believers who walk in love, who serve in love, who lead in love, who forgive in love, and who demonstrate your love on a daily basis. Thank you, Father, because we are praying in Jesus' name. Sorry, before I take my seat, in case there are people here, you want to take a decision for Jesus. He is love personified. If you open the door of your heart, he will not only come into your life, he will bring his love into your life. And someone here saying, I want to be born again. I want to turn my heart over to Jesus. I want him to become Lord of my life. If you are such a person in this gathering, lift up your right hand as a sign of surrender. We'll pray for you and your life will never be the same. You are saying pray for me. I want to give my heart to Jesus. I want to be born again. Lift up your right hand wherever you are as a sign of surrender. We'll pray for you and your life will never be the same. Please, I like us to our hearts so it's not to fulfill all righteousness, but we do it in understanding. Let's pray for our pastor. We do it in understanding. Let's pray for him. Let's ask that the love of God be strengthened in his heart. Let's pray for him. The love of Christ be strengthened in his heart. Let's ask that the Lord will increase grace upon his life. Let's ask that the Lord will take him deeper. The Lord will grant him insight. The Lord will strengthen him even in faith on a daily basis. Father, we pray for your servant. This hour, we ask that Lord, you will strengthen him. We ask that you will increase him on every area. We receive grace for him. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Please let's worship the Lord this afternoon with our resources. Let's give our offering to the Lord and let's give our tithes to the Lord. We believe in paying and giving tithe in this house. So please, in this facility today, let's give God our offering. Let's give God our tithe. Let's rise to our feet. You have the envelope. You can do it physically. The detail is on the screen. If you are joining us online, you have the opportunity of giving your, your offering. If you are here and you want to, 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 to do it via the account detail, please, the detail is on the screen. Let's give our offering. Let's give our tithe as we worship the Lord. Please, the, the music team can take us. Supernatural Baba, dependable Jehovah Most High. Are you ready? God, supernatural father, oh, dependable,
you as the mighty God. We acknowledge you as the Lord of our lives. We acknowledge you as the giver of every good and perfect gift. We acknowledge you as the sustainer of our destiny. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we have given our resources to worship, to honor you. We ask that you will accept our offerings. We ask that you will cause the heavens to be opened upon us. We ask for the blessing that comes from <coughs> upon our lives, even as we go this month, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, precious Father, for as many that do not have the opportunity to give today. You will cause the heavens to be opened upon them. You will remember them for good in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father, for answering this prayer. For in Jesus' precious name we are praying. Amen. Please, you may be seated. You may be seated. We'll listen to the following announcements. Please, let's remember our Discovery service will be taking place this Wednesday on the 10th, I mean on the 4th of October uh, 2023. This Wednesday, uh, Pastor will be uh, laying emphasis on the program that we have a special program having ne next week on the 4th. But God's servants will uh, emphasize on that when it's closing the service. We'll be here on Wednesday for the discovery service. I remain the duty pastor for, for this week. Please. You can get across to me in good time. If you have testimony, you have special number, please get across to me in good time. Please don't, don't wait until Friday, this Saturday, before you start asking who's the digital pastor. If you don't know me as the digital pastor, you can ask one of the pastors. They will tell you that Pastor Yemi or Dedo is the digital pastor for the week. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, the, the picture is there. So you can see him. He's the digital pastor for the week. Hallelujah. Please, if you are here to go through the foundation class, Please put down your name with Sister Jennifer or Sister uh, uh, Queen so that we can arrange how you... There's a sister that, that mentioned to me last, last Sunday that she wants to go through a foundation class. Please, you can meet Sister Jennifer. She will, she will help you to start the class today. We encourage us to, to give testimony. We listen to Sister Loretta's testimony today and we are we're all, all encouraged. Please, we'll encourage you to give testimony. Don't cover what the Lord has done. Let other people be encouraged by his marvelous work in your life. So you can get across to us in good time. We'll give you a slot so that you can give your testimony. By the grace of God, Jesus' crusade is coming this month of October, 12 to 14. Uh, yes, hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. We go out for Jesus' crusade once in a year. And this one is coming the October, the 12th to 14th at a Bukuma village in Andoni, local government. So please, we encourage us to make ourselves available. I asked Pastor Clinton earlier, earlier on how many people have put, put, put down their name. The pastor announced the other day that we have to Monday on the second, if you are going with us and we'll encourage you to, to follow us. We encourage you to go. Please put down your name with Pastor Clinton so that we can plan accommodation, the feeding, the logistics. Please put down your name with Pastor Clinton so that we can know how many people that are going, going with us. Coppers, this is a privilege to come and do the, um, what was that thing we normally do? Rural rura, rura gate. This is the higher height of rural rura gate. Please, you can put down your, your name. We will transport you. There's feeding, there's accommodation. Everything is free. So please, you can meet Pastor Clinton at the end of the service so that we can go together. And we trust God for uh, uh uh, a productive outing at Ibukuma in Jesus' precious name. Hang out sports day. IHHP hang out and sports day is coming tomorrow. Tomorrow, we just want to hang out. It's not only, like, like, like Gustav normally said, it's not only teaching, 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 teaching. We want to hang out. We want to just dress down, relax, take drink, take snacks, play table tennis. If you know how to play Ayu, meet me there tomorrow. Yes, if you want to know how to play table tennis, meet me there tomorrow. 
to the glory of God. So at Ashbad, Ashbad Energy Field, by the grace of God, tomorrow, uh, 10 a.m., 10, 10 a.m. To tomorrow, we will be there along this road. At the end, end of the, this road, no, uh, the, the first turning by the right on, the, on this road, then you go by the right, you go straight, the first gate by the right. So please just meet us there. If you don't know, know the place, I'm sure if you come around here, maybe around 9, 30, 10, you will see somebody that will direct you to, to the place. Also, this Saturday, we'll be having capacity prayer. This, this Saturday, yes, Saturday, the 7th of October, we'll be having capacity prayer. Don't be scared. That is six hours. Don't, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. From 9 to about 3 p.m., we'll be here praying together. So we'll encourage you, if you have never joined us before, this is an opportunity. You can postpone that journey. You can, you can make that trip next, next, next weekend. Yes, if you want to travel to Abuja, you can, you can, you can, you can, you can postpone that, that trip to, 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 to the next one. So that you can, you can come and pray with us here on Saturday. Hallelujah. I didn't mention anybody's name. Yet. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So we see on, on, on Saturday for capacity prayer, six hours to the glory of God. I, I know that there are some other, other things to, to take, but God's servant will, will take it as we close the, the service. Yes, before we go, let's celebrate the first timers today. You are worshiping God with us in this facility for the first time. Let me see your hands up. Today is your first time here. In this auditorium, hallelujah. Please just rise to your feet. Just rise to your feet. Let, let, let's welcome them. Yes, we have a sister here also. We have a brother here. Yes. Yes, we have a brother. We have a sister. This is the house of his presence. Reaching us to every nation. Sing it. If you know the song, seated in God's presence. We'd like to welcome you. Technology, let's welcome our guests for today.
Thank you and have a blessed time. Hallelujah. Please, for emphasis sake, please, our brother and our sister, our brother and sister, please, uh, after the service is over, we'd like to see you at the extreme end, this side, just to have a few minutes with you. There's a space already uh, separated for you there. Please, we'd like to see you just for a brief, brief moment to have a chat with you. You are, you are welcome and you are blessed in Jesus' name. Please, let's welcome our pastor as we close the service for today. Praise the Lord. I know something uh, catches my attention. The lady in the uh, welcome of guests uh, projected on the screen uh, made me to remember an incident around 1995. One of my friends went to England. I went to worship in a particular church. So he said he enjoyed the service. The man of God, the pastor, prayed powerfully. And then the man of God stepped down. And then later on in the service, towards the end of the service, he saw ah the man again. He said, ah, what kind of church is this that man of God is changing clothes during service? What kind of thing is this? This must be a canal church. This must be a canal pastor. And he said, all kind of thoughts just flew through. What kind of church is this and all that? Ah, they see things for London, shall? Then as they share the benediction, ah, they now saw there are two of them. <laughs> Identical twins. So one preached, the other one came to do some other things during the service. And he thought it was the same person. And he said, this must be a canal pastor, we can't church with these. So I leave it to your thoughts, the person who did the... <laughs> Hallelujah. I'd like to appreciate our people who invited guests today. I'd like to appreciate our guests who came to worship god with us and celebrate the goodness of god we're glad to have you you are answers to our prayers and we don't make light of your coming today house of his presence is big enough to house you if you are guided to be a part of this church we're big enough to to receive you to house you we are small enough to know you no matter our numbers we are small enough to know you to identify with you i believe that if god leads you this way to be a part of this house together we can be a partaker of the goodness of God, a partaker of his presence, and a partaker of the benefits he has allocated to this church and ministry in Jesus' name. We still like to appeal to our members, next Sunday is another opportunity. Take the responsibility during the week. Invite someone, could be a couple, could be a person, could be a family, could be a neighbor, could be a classmate, could be a workmate, work colleague, invite someone to church next sunday i will trust god for another refreshing experience in his presence we have um, the bukuma jesus crusade coming shall we celebrate the lord for that and it's already upon us it's next week today marks the beginning of a new week till saturday and then from next sunday a new week commences and during that week, we'll be moving to a Bukuma community in Andoni um, local government area. Um, so to this effect, we want to challenge every one of us. As we, how many people are planning to go for the crusade, Jesus crusade? You are planning to go. Let me just see your hand. Your hand is either up like mine or it's not up. Uh -huh. I'm seeing your hand. Uh, plenty, plenty. God bless all those. People, the coppers, ex coppers, leaders, families. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Please do me a favor today. Once we share the benediction, just attack this man in yellow. This man. <laughs> Say, I've put down my name. Please, I have to go somewhere. Put down my name. Put it down first. So, see Pastor Clinton, Maxine, or help us to put, media can help us to put up his phone number. You can just send a message to him, maybe an SMS or WhatsApp, indicating your interest to go for. Media, please help us to put up Pastor Clinton. He's a public figure, so no hiding place. Put up his phone number and let him communicate that information um, with him. Please, we need funds. Over the years, we've been doing Jesus Proceeds, and we have never lagged for funds. 
I don't think there has been any year we have had to say, oh, we wanted to spend two million. Ah, it's like we have to grade it down to two hundred thousand. The bills have always been met. The budget for this year's crusade is five point five million naira, and we still have a massive ground to cover. But I'm persuaded the same God who has used us in past previous years is also able to use us this year. So my heart is not flustered at all. I'm not disturbed. I know that. From the left, the right, from every quarter, on site today, online. I know people will respond to this. Families will respond to this. So but we need to do it quickly. There are things we need. There are many things we've done, actually. But there are still so many things we need to do. We need to purchase things. We need to rebag the food stuff we'll be purchasing. We're buying rice. We're buying indomie. We're buying um, some of the condiments, maybe like maggi and some of those things. And we need volunteers who will be coming around. When are we planning to do the rebagging? No plan to rebag? No faith? Uh, no, I need to ask. <laughs> so when are we planning for rebagging? Friday this week or Monday next week? Friday this week. All right. So we need volunteers. If you can make out time, what time 10 okay so if you can make out time 10 o'clock do we normally come in the morning okay if we can make out time we need volunteers who will help us we're planning to buy the things we're buying so that we can really bag them on friday from 10 o'clock we need from amongst our young people from amongst our coppers from amongst our women from amongst our men who can make out the time we need uh volunteers to help with re bagging the items will be taken for the crusade and like we appealed if you have clothes you have bags you have shoes that are in good condition put them together present them decently and package them decently bring to us so that we can also put together all those things we know what we have and we know what we are taking to the crusade for the crusade um yeah um but also please we need funds we need funds we need to buy a lot of these things we need to buy medical um medical aid we will have to appreciate the doctors who will be uh, will, will be engaging to go with us for the outreach we need to hire vehicles buses trucks to move heavy equipment move the food stuff and um we need funds for so many other logistic details so please respond to us and help our faith help our faith by responding but i'm very persuaded we'll be able to give us feedback um by next sunday and the sunday after the um crusade that all that we plan to do we are able to do and nothing was um taken off the list can i have an amen to that today is first of october i actually wanted to i think i'll use the social media platform there some things god has been putting a word in my heart I don't know the magnitude of it like i told our pastors a few days ago but that word is restore 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 i don't know if it's just for the month i don't know if it's beyond the month but there is a word restore so i uh, will pray for us in that light before we close today um and then i will also try to engage the media space to i mean for that prayer so that we can have it and we can also share it with others We'll be having a praying and fasting exercise for three days. This today is the first day of the last quarter of the year, October, November, December. And we just want to secure the remainder of the year in the place of prayers and committing things to God. And in addition to that, we want to also commit the Bukuma Jesus Crusade. People have started praying, leadership council have started praying, intercessors have started praying, and different groups have started praying. But also as a church, we want to pray together. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday of this week. Wednesday, 4th, Thursday, 5th, Friday, 6th. On those days, morning and evening, we'll meet online to pray for one hour. 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. But on the first day, being the Wednesday, we're going to, the 4th of October, we're going to be meeting physically. I'm going to be meeting physically in the course of our discovery service to pray and also to hear the word of God. So please take note of that. Five sessions online, 
wednesday morning thursday morning friday morning and then thursday evening and friday evening six to seven six to seven so please take note of that and also we're going to be praying for a book mark crusade i'm going to be committing the last um, quarter of the year on various facets to the lord and then also we're going to be praying concerning the church and growth and enlargement and expansion and the lord will hear us when we call in jesus name and saturday we have capacity prayers no praying i mean no fasting on saturday or we're going to be coming together to pray and stretch our capacity in the place of prayer on saturday and that will start from nine o'clock in the morning shall we rise to our feet to close the service Sorry, I forgot the... You know me, I'm so spiritual. So spiritual. So I forgot to pick me tomorrow. I will be there. I will be one of the first to be there. I, mean, I, 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 I want to enjoy myself. <laughs> so from 10 o'clock tomorrow till about 4, 5, we'll be hanging out together at the Ashbad Energy Field. It's just, if you know, uh, understand the description from here, you cross the railway in front of the church. Just go straight down after the uh access bank to the left then new climb i'm not sure they're still pressing to the to the right just by the new climb fence the road was recently tarred you turn right as you turn right you go straight down you get to elf junction or total junction and then a small police post a container for a police post and immediately after it i think the first premise after that police post the gates on the right so you go straight like this that's about 400 meters but after new climb just by new climb you turn right and then you go another like 500 meters you get to a junction turning right takes you to the main entrance of total oil company but instead of turning right you go further down before you go get to dhl you see the premise on the right there after the police post that's ashbad energy uh, company they have a massive field where they will be hosting us and a lot of logistics has already gone into that. We also want to encourage us, bring something. Bring snacks. Bring biscuits. Bring drinks. Bring water. Bring games. Bring football. Bring table tennis. Bring your bats. And let's bring things just to enjoy. Have fun together. Connect with one another. Know some. Make one or two new friends. And it's going to be a real fun time together. Do we have a DJ in the house? Dami Larry, are you a DJ? Do we have a DJ in the house? This coppers, no DJ amongst you. Andy, ah, what are we? What are we looking for? See Andy here, please. I think we can move. Maybe even if it's the sound system, my office or something. Or okay, so let's move. Let's also have music there. Let's have fun. So me, I'm just so spiritual if you know how we can enjoy ourselves just come and advise all these elders advise them they are too spiritual only book 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 bible bible speak in tongues so please come and help us advise them that we can do this we can do that it will add to the fun and it will be a great time together praise the lord praise the lord restore 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 to restore is to bring back to restore is also to take back to restore is also to turn back uh, many things we, you know, that can be restored in our lives the joy of salvation can be restored he said restore to me the joy of salvation psalm 51 and verse 12 your joy of salvation can be restored if you have lost time lost ground it looks like people situations and um, uh, I mean, um, colleagues have since outrun you your time can be restored he said the years the locust the palmer worm the canker worm the caterpillar have devoured the lord said i will restore 
When you read in John chapter 2 from verse 23 to verse 25, God can restore um, lost time. God can restore your captivity. You found yourself becoming a lawful captive because of wrong choices, because of wrong associations, because of wrong lifestyles. You know this thing coming upon you is as a result of misdeeds of the past. God can turn your captivity around. He said in Psalm 126 from verse 1, when the Lord turned around the captivity, of Zion. Zion are a people of God, a people of covenant. Yet they found themselves in captivity. When the Lord turned around the captivity of Zion, or oh, like those who dream, then the nations around us said, Surely the Lord has done great things for them, and we ourselves we confirmed it. Yes, the Lord has done great things for us. And then intentionally they asked, He said, Turn our captivity again as the waters in the desert. And so, in case you are in any form of loss of um, lost grounds lost faith lost joy of salvation may the lord restore he said in isaiah chapter 42 from verse 21 to verse 2 and verse 21 to verse 22 he said the lord will exalt his word his law and make it honorable but in the midst of some people where god's word is exalted and honored he said but these people they are snared in holes they are found in prison houses he said they are for a plunder they are trapped in the prisons of life and they are for a plunder and they are robbed and there is no one to say restore but I come as God's oracle today in case you are snared in any prison of life snared in your finances snared in your relationship snared in your destiny in this season in this month in this quarter I announce over your life by the spirit of the Lord restore Whatever the enemy has cheated you of, cheated you of opportunities, cheated you of life, and made you a lawful cat, he said, don't you know, you are the one who made us to come into your life. How can you be saying you now want to be free? He said, even the prey shall be taken from the mouth of the terrible. He said, the lawful captive shall be delivered. I speak into your life. Restore! Stolen time, stolen treasures, stolen abilities, stolen joy, stolen ground, stolen life, stolen harvest. I decree right now, restore! You will not handle life alone. The Lord of hosts will handle your life for you. We handle your life with you. We handle your life in you. We propel your life by himself. I speak of our lives again this day. Restore! Everything good. Everything honorable. Everything to the glory of God. Taken from you. Deprived you. You have been deprived of. I decree right now. Restore! Take back your honor. Take back your crowns. Take back your treasures. Take back your original destiny. Take back. Take back lost crowns. In the name of Jesus. Lord confirm these words with signs. Make a name for yourself out of these lives. Showcase yourself in these lives. And make their lives honorable. And make their lives glorious. And turn back the plunderer, the robber, and the thief. We thank you, Father. We decree in Jesus' name. Amen. The benediction together, Hebrews chapter 13, verses 20 and 21. Now may the God of peace who brought up our Lord Jesus from the dead, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make me complete in every good work, to do his will, walking in me what is well pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you, cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord give you new grounds. The Lord restore great things into your life that brings him honor and glory in Jesus' name. I love you all. God bless you. Have a great one.